lovely students welcome back to my youtube channel Galib's english school in today's video we're going to be attempting mock test from mock test series for car theory test we have created these tests for you to pass your car theory test in first attempt before i start i would like you to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon down below for all the updates so let's straight jump into that question one you are in a tunnel your vehicle is on fire and you cannot drive it what should you do guys make sure look at the situation you are in a tunnel and your vehicle catches fire and you are unable to drive that what should you do leave the engine running switch off all your lights stay in the vehicle and close the windows switch on hazard warning lights the best practice is Switch on hazard warning lights. Question 2. How do motorways prevent traffic bunching? Now, what does traffic bunching mean? Traffic bunching means if a group of vehicles traveling at the same speed in all the three lanes of the motorway. That's very dangerous. It's potential hazard for each other. So in that situation, if one of them loses control, and can hit others and that may cause a serious accident so how do motorways control them or stop them by using minimum speed limits by using higher speed limits by using maximum speed limits by using variable speed limits so from the control room they can check it and they use variable speed limits to prevent traffic bunching Question 3. You are traveling on a road that has road humps. Guys, road has road humps on the road. Traffic calming measures, they are there for a reason. You need to understand that. What should you do when the driver in front is traveling more slowly than you? Flash your headlights. Slow down and stay behind. Sound your horn. Overtake as soon as as you can the best practice is you need to slow down and stay behind question four what will reduce the fuel consumption so what can slow down the consumption of fuel or reduce or decrease the fuel consumption of your car accelerating rapidly driving more slowly late and heavy braking staying in lower gear the correct option is driving more slowly can reduce the fuel consumption question 5 at an incident someone is suffering from severe burns so someone's skin has been burnt as a result of an accident how could you help them remove anything sticking to the burns Douse the burn with clean, cool water, burst any blisters, or apply lotion to the injury. The best practice is you need to douse the burn with clean, cool water. That will help the injured person. So, in this situation, you need to be mentally and physically active and ready to help others. Question 6. Where would you see these road markings? So guys, apart from road signs, road marking also helps us to choose the appropriate lane or to find our destination earlier. So road marking like this, where would you find that? At a pedestrian crossing, at a level crossing, on a motorway slip road, on a single track road. So I would suggest whenever you appear in your practical exam, so apart from looking at the signs, make sure look at the road marking also. Because sometimes you are given uh, instruction, your examiner says, okay, go straight ahead. And usually students or learners, they fail exam because they keep it in the left lane. And they think that left lane, we will take the first exit or if you want to go to straight ahead we will 
go straight ahead, take the second exit. But that's not always the case because sometimes left lane is only for left lane. And how can you tell? You maybe have seen in the sign, but you didn't realize. So look at the road markings. On the road surface, you will see a massive, a large arrow showing you that this lane is only for left. So don't go into that lane. If your examiner asks you to go straight ahead, you need to move to the middle lane or the lane next to it on the right hand side. That lane will go to straight ahead or you can use that lane for right also. But make sure you always check road marking. So where would we see this marking? This marking, you will find it on a motorway slip road. Question seven, what most likely to waste fuel? It's under inflated tire. So what waste your fuel using different brands of fuel? No. Driving slowly? No. Driving on motorways? No. Uh, under inflated tires that cause you to waste your fuel. So make sure your tire should be properly inflated. Question eight. What should you do if you see a large box fall from a lorry onto the motorway? Stop close to the box until police arrive. Go to the next emergency telephone and report the hazard. Pull over the right shoulder, then remove the box. Catch up with the lorry and try to get driver's attention. Guys, you need to be very careful. It's a motorway. It's very busy, very dangerous. So you need to follow all the rules and regulations. If you want to save yourself and keep others safe as well. So in this situation, you need to go to the next emergency telephone and report the hazard. You don't need to do anything yourself. Question nine, what will be a serious distraction while you are driving? Serious distraction. What can distract you? while you are driving, using your windscreen washer, switching on your demister, looking at road maps, looking in your door mirrors. If you look at the road maps while you are driving, that can potentially distract you and can cause you an incident. Question 10. What does this sign mean? Low bridge, traffic calming hum, uneven road, hump bridge. This sign is for hump bridge. Question 11. Your car requires an MOT certificate. When is it legal to drive without an MOT certificate? When driving to an MOT center to arrange an appointment? When driving a car with owner's permission? When driving to an appointment at an MOT center? up to seven days after the old certificate has run out. Guys, you have one year for MOT. That's valid for one year. So when can you drive without MOT? You can drive without MOT when you are driving to an appointment at an MOT center. Question 12. Why have red routes been introduced in major cities? Red routes. Road surface that might be in red color. So why they have introduced this type of red routes? To provide better parking, to raise speed limits, to help the traffic flow, to allow lorries to load more freely. Red routes are there to help the traffic flow. It means, in other words, no stopping. Question 13. This junction controlled by traffic lights. You can see that here. And has a marked area between two stop lines. So first stop line is here, white one. And the second stop line is there. What's this for? Why they have these two stop lines? To allow pedestrian and cyclist to cross the road together to allow taxi to position in front of other traffic, to allow cyclists to position in front of other traffic, to allow people with disabilities 
to cross the road. So these two white lines are there to allow cyclists to position in front of other traffic. So as soon as lights change, first cyclists will move and then you will follow them. Question 14. You have stopped at a pelican crossing. What should you do if disabled person is crossing slowly in front of you and the lights change to green? Guys, pelican crossing where amber lights keep flashing. And then if they change to green and still there is an old person crossing right in front of you, what should you do? Sound your horn, drive in front of them, wait for them to finish crossing, edge forward slowly. You need to show some respect. So you need to wait for them to finish crossing. Question 15. Which road users are most difficult to see while you are reversing your car? It's quite simple to understand. When we drive, we look forward and we can see all the hazards and any potential danger. But when we reverse, we need to check at the back. While we are reversing, while carrying out that maneuver, we need to check and check very carefully. So which one of these road users can be at risk? Children, cyclists, motorcyclists or car drivers? That is children because they are small and they cannot be seen sometimes because they are too small and they are just hidden behind the car body. So we need to check it very carefully while reversing. Question 16. What part of the car does the law require you to keep in good condition? What part of the car in good condition is the requirement by law? The gearbox? the seat belts, the transmission, the door locks. You need to keep your seat belts in good condition because they will save you. Question 17. You are on a motorway. What must you do if there is a red cross, red cross guys, showing above every lane? You can see that here. There is a red cross above every lane. What should you do in this situation? Slow down and watch for further signals. Stop and wait. Pull on the hard shoulder. Leave at the next exit. The best practice is you need to stop and wait for further instructions. Question 18. On a motorway, when should the hard shoulder be used? When are we allowed to use the hard shoulder? When taking a short rest? When an emergency arises? when checking road map, when answering a mobile phone. Hard shoulders are only for emergencies. So we should be using that when an emergency arises. Question 19. What should you carry for use in the event of a collision? In simple words, if you have an accident, what should you have with you? Fire extinguisher, jump lead, can of petrol, road map. In this situation, you should keep a fire extinguisher. Maybe you can save someone's life while extinguishing the fire with your fire extinguisher. Question 20. You are turning left on a slippery road. Situation is this. You are turning left. The road surface is very slippery. What should you do if the back of your vehicle slides to the right? Opposite direction. The back of your vehicle slides. What should you do? Brake firmly and don't turn the steering wheel. Steer carefully to the right. Brake firmly and steer to the left. Steer carefully to the left. The best practice is in this situation, you need to steer carefully to the right. Question 21. You are approaching a junction where the traffic lights aren't working. Guys, junctions are usually controlled by traffic lights, but sometimes traffic lights are out of order. So you have a police officer facing towards you. What should you do when a police officer gives you this signal? You should continue ahead only. You should turn right only. Stop at the stop line. Turn left only. Follow the signal. It means stop at the stop line. 
Question 22. What should you do while you are driving or riding along a motorway? Travel much faster while you do on the other roads. Concentrate more than you would on other roads. Maintain a short separation distance than you would on other roads. Look much further ahead than you would on other roads. If you are driving or riding along motorway, you need to look much further ahead than you would on smaller roads or other roads. Question 23. What should you do when you park at night on a road that has 40 miles speed limit? If you park at a road where the speed limit is 40 or 40 plus and it's night time, what should you do? Leave parking light switched on. Leave dipped headlights switched on, park near a street light, park facing traffic. So what you need to do, you need to leave parking lights switched on. Question 24. Which sign means no entry? Sign 1, sign 2, sign 3 or sign 4. So here, no entry is sign number 4. First one is national speed limit. Second one is no stopping. Third one is waiting restriction. And the fourth one is no entry. 25. What's the national speed limit for a car and motorcycle? On which road? On a single carriageway road. Guys, speed limit is very important. You need to follow that. As soon as the road changes, speed limit changes also. So make sure you follow that. So now you are driving or riding along a single carriageway. So what should be the speed limit? 40 miles per hour, 50 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour or 70 miles per hour. So on a single carriageway, it's 60 miles per hour. Question 26. Why should you check for motorcyclists just before turning right into a side road? You want to turn right into a side road, why should you always check for motorcyclists? They may be emerging from the side road, they may be overtaking on your right, they may be overtaking on your left, or they may be following you closely. Motorcyclists, they are always overtaking on the right, so make sure if you want to turn right, give the signal Confirm your signal, make sure, do all the observation, check your mirrors and your blind spot always. That should be your priority. Question 27. At traffic lights, what does it mean when the amber light shows on its own? It means stop at the stop line. Question 28. What does this sign mean? Guys, there are three lanes, left hand, lane, middle lane and right hand lane. So what does this sign tell you? The right hand lane is closed, the right hand lane ahead is narrow, right hand lane for buses only, right hand lane for turning right only. The best practice is the right hand lane is closed. So you can see this marking here that tells you that right hand lane there is no through road is closed so you need if you are traveling in right hand lane you need to give signal and in good time you need to move to middle lane either or you can move to left hand lane but make sure do all the observation check your blind spot and give signal and then you maneuver question 29 why should you look carefully for motorcyclists and cyclists at junctions Junctions are very busy. When you stop there, it means you have to do all the observations. And motorcyclists and cyclists, they come very fast. And why should you look carefully for them? They may want to turn into the side road. They might not see you turn. They may slow down to let you turn or they are harder to see. The correct option is they are harder to see. They are fast and small, so we don't realize how fast they come. And suddenly, most of the drivers, they don't really see them. And as soon as they emerge, pff, accident. 
Question 30. You are following a large vehicle it, as it approaches crossroad. Guys, a vehicle approaches crossroads. That's crossroad. You are following that from any direction and it's coming to this point here right in the middle. What should you do if the driver signals to turn left? Driver gives a left signal. It means whichever direction is coming from it will take first the left. What should you do in this situation? Wait for the driver to cancel their signal. Overtake if you can leave plenty of room. Wait for the vehicle to finish turning. Overtake if there are no oncoming vehicles. The best practice is in this situation you need to wait for the vehicle to finish turning. You know why? Because lorries or uh, bigger vehicles, for example, vans and all that larger vehicles, they need more space. They need more room to turn. So you need to stay behind. Let them finish the turning. They may straddle two lanes. So you need to wait behind to finish turning. Question 31. What does this sign mean? Trams only? Trams crossing ahead? No trams ahead? Oncoming trams. This sign is for trams crossing ahead. So it's giving you a warning because it's a red triangle and triangle shapes they are for warning. So they are telling you that you need to be careful, slow down because there is a tram crossing ahead. Question 32. What should you do before making a U-turn? Guys, this is an editing error. That should be U and turn. So U-turn when we go all the way and then come back. That's a U-turn. Check road marking to see that road uh, U-turns are permitted. Give an arm signal as well as using your indicators. Look over your shoulder for the final check. Select a high gear than normal. So, for this spelling mistake, my apologies. The best practice is look over your shoulder for a final check when you want to take a U-turn. Question 33. What should you do if you are driving a slow moving vehicle on a narrow winding road? Road situation. It's not open stretch of the road. It's a narrow winding road. So what should you do? You are driving a slow moving vehicle and your vehicle is very slow. You are driving it. Maybe it's loaded. The road is countryside, narrow winding road. You are holding up the drivers right behind you. So in this situation, what should you do? Give a left signal when it's safe for the vehicles to overtake you. Keep well out to stop um, vehicles overtaking you dangerously. Pull in when you can and let the vehicles behind overtake. Wave the vehicles behind to come past you if you think they can overtake quickly. Pull in when you can to let the vehicles behind overtake. So you need to slow down on the left hand side and let the vehicles overtake you. Because if you are going slowly, maybe you are loaded or for some other reason, don't hold other drivers because drivers behind they don't like. So let them overtake. Question 34. Who has priority at an unmarked crossroad? Guys, unmarked crossroad means there is a crossroad, for example, but there is, let's say, no marking on the ground or on the, for example, road surface. So now this is kind of unmarked crossroad. So if you are having this kind of situation, who has priority? Who will go first? The faster drivers, uh, the smaller vehicles, the larger vehicles, or no one has priority. In this situation, no one has priority. This is unmarked crossroad. Question 35. You are in the left-hand lane in the traffic lights. Guys, left-hand lane. Waiting to turn left and you want to turn left. Which signal means you must wait? Question is a bit tricky. So which of these signals tell you that you must wait? 
So this signal tells you that you must wait. Question 36. Where may you overtake on a one-way street? One-way street, guys, you are going straight ahead. All the traffic is going in one direction. And when can you overtake? Only on the right-hand side, on either the right or the left, only on the left-hand side, or overtaking isn't allowed. Best practice is on either the right or the left. So you can overtake either the right-hand side or the left-hand side. Now, some of you may think that, oh, we are allowed to overtake on the right-hand side. Why are we doing overtake from the left? Because, guys, it's one-way direction or it's one-way street. There is no oncoming traffic. So let's say you are following a driver and the driver gives a right signal to park. So you can overtake from the left. Or if you are following a driver who gives a left-hand signal, wants to park there or stop there, you can take an overtake from the right. So you can either use the right or the left-hand side to overtake in one-way street. Question 37. Some two-way roads are divided into three lanes. Two-way roads and there is additional third lane right in the middle. Why are they particularly dangerous? They are definitely dangerous. Why? Traffic can overtake on the left. Traffic in both directions can use the middle lane to overtake. Traffic can travel faster in poor weather condition or traffic uses the middle lane for emergency only. They are dangerous because traffic in both direction can use the middle lane to overtake. Question 38. What does this sign mean? Look at this sign, guys. It's again warning sign. You need to be careful. So, what does this sign mean? Uneven road surface, steep hill downwards, quayside or riverbank, road liable to flooding. So, this tells you that you need to park in a suitable place because if you park on the quayside or riverbank, you may lose your car. Question 39. What will affect your vehicle stopping distance? The condition of the tires, the time of the day, the speed limit, the street lighting. The condition of your tires that can change your stopping distance. So make sure always check your tires condition. Question 40. Why is it bad technique to coast when you are driving downhill? Guys, you're dri driving downhill and you are coasting. That's very dangerous because when we go downhill, the car is picking up speed automatically. And second thing, its weight adds up. And at the same time, you take it to neutral and press the clutch pedal down. That is dangerous. Why? The tires will wear more quickly. The vehicle will gain speed more quickly. The engine will overheat. The fuel consumption will increase. In this situation, if you do coasting, the vehicle will gain speed more quickly. You will have your vehicle out of control quite easily. So, don't use this technique. Question 41. When will anti-lock brakes take effect? So, what's the best way when anti-lock brakes, they start working properly? When you are speeding on a slippery road surface, when you haven't seen a hazard ahead, when the wheels are about to lock, when you don't brake quickly enough. Anti-lock brakes, they work properly when the wheels are about to lock. That's why we call them anti-lock, because they unlock your wheels and steering wheel. Question 42. Why are these yellow lines painted across the road? Guys, look at the picture. In this picture, you can see a lot of uh, yellow lines. They are painted across the road. And there is a road sign, which is uh, your roundabout sign. 
So if you look at this one closely, you can see that these yellow lines are painted throughout this bend. Why are they there? They are there to help you keep the correct separation distance, to help you choose the correct lane, to make you aware of your speed or to tell you the distance to the roundabout. These yellow lines are there to make you aware of your speed. So as soon as you drive over them, you can hear to your car, it changes its noise. So it, that situation tell you that you need to slow down because there is a hazard. And what's that hazard? That's a roundabout. You need to slow down because there is too much traffic, maybe three, four lanes getting into the roundabout. You need to choose the appropriate lane, slow down, change your gear if you are driving manual car. So that can help you to control your speed. Question 43. How will heavy load on your roof rack affect the vehicle's handling? So if you have a lot of heavy load on your roof rack, how that's going to affect your vehicle's handling? It will make the street it will make the steering lighter, it will improve the road holding, it will reduce stability, it will reduce stopping distance. So if you have too much weight in your car or on your roof rack, that will definitely reduce your stability. Question 44. If you are involved in a collision, what will reduce the risk of neck injury? In other words, what can help you with neck injuries or to keep you safe from neck injuries. A collapsible steering wheel, a properly adjusted head restraint, anti-lock brakes, an air sprung seat. If you have properly adjusted head restraint, that will definitely save you from neck injuries as a result of an accident. Question 45. What does this sign tell you? Now, what does this sign mean? Wait at the crossroad, give way to trams, wait at the barriers, give way to form vehicles. This sign means give way to trams. Question 46. What will happen if you use a rear fog lights? So you want to use rear fog lights. Rear fog lights means your car's back uh, fog lights and you want to use them in good condition. There is no point of doing that. So what can this cause? They will make drivers behind you well keep well back. They will make it safer when towing a trailer. They will dazzle other road users or drivers. They will protect you from larger vehicles. If you use rear fog lights in good condition, they will dazzle other road users. That is a potential hazard. So don't do that, please. Question 47. Pass plus scheme has been created for new drivers. What is the main purpose? What is the main reason for that? Why new drivers should go for pass plus scheme? Pass plus scheme means you have passed your practical driving test, but still you are not confident and you want to go on, uh, for example, for motorways, you want to do some further training. So as a result of that further training, when you complete that, you will get a Pass Plus Scheme certificate. And that can help you also to get a better insurance. So that has been introduced for new drivers. So what's the main purpose? To improve your basic skills, to let you drive on motorways, to allow you to drive faster, to allow you to carry passengers. Pass Plus Scheme, that will help you to improve your basic skills. Because some drivers, they pass their practical test even in their first attempt, but still they struggle when they go to another town, when they go into busy town centers or a bigger roundabouts, they get confused. So there is a possibility if that's the case, you can get a Pass Plus Scheme training and that can help you to improve your basic skills and also it will get you a cheaper insurance because you are a safe driver. Question 48. Guys, as you are aware, in the last three questions, we have a video clip. We watch that video clip and there are three questions, three different questions based on that video clip. So make sure I'm going to play the video and watch it carefully. 
check all the road markings and all the road signs very carefully so you can answer the question easily. Now here is a question. Why is there a warning reduce speed now? So warnings are always in triangle shape sign. So make sure when I play the video, look or watch closely so you can understand that. There you go. So you are going along this dual carriageway and you can see there are people waiting at the junction. Always give the right indicator wherever you want to go and that will help other road users also. Now here it asks you about reduce speed sign. So why are there reduce speed signs? Uh, why we have to reduce our speed there? There is a T-junction ahead. There is a Sega junction ahead. There is a crossroad and a double bend ahead. Traffic is merging from the left. The correct option is there is a crossroads and a double bend ahead. That's why you saw two signs both on each side of the road and there were warning signs for you to reduce your speed as well. Question 49. We'll watch the video again but this time question is about something else. Now here it's asking you why has the line in the center of the road has changed or the middle of the road. It's asking you about this line here. So make sure this line changes accordingly. So let's watch the video and look at the road carefully, please. Is normal now? There you go. It has changed now. Look at the gap. So why has this line in the center of the road changed? What is the reason for that? So the question is about changing the middle lane. Why has this center line changed? It has changed to warn you that there is a speed camera ahead, to warn you not to change lanes, to warn you the speed limit has changed, or to warn of a hazard ahead. Best answer is it has been there or it has changed to warn you of a hazard ahead because there is a bend and there is a crossroad. So you need to be very careful. You need to slow down. Question 50. Same video clip, but his time is asking you about something else. The driver towing the caravan. So where is this driver towing the caravan? This driver is at the crossroad waiting, wants to turn right. And you can see in the video clip, it has its right indicator on and it wants to take the right uh, turn and wants to come on this dual carriageway. What should they do? Watch the video clip. So we are going straight ahead. This car will give you left indicator. Yeah, they want to turn left. And can you see there now, the driver with the caravan, he has given the right indicator at this crossroad and he wants to go all the way to the right. So what should he do? He should wait there until the road is clear in both direction before turning. He should move out when an approaching driver flashes their headlights. He should turn and find a suitable place to turn around or they move partly into the center reservation and wait until it's safe to turn. Here, the best practice is they should wait until the road is clear in both direction. You know why? Because it's not only one car. It has a caravan. Length. Guys, it has changed now. So the length of the vehicle has changed. They have to control and it will take them more space to turn. So that's why they need to wait there until the traffic in both direction has stopped or is clear and then they can go on.
So guys, this was mock test from mock test series for car theory test. If you have any question, please drop them in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and share this video. Look after yourself and this channel. Thanks for watching.